everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes Long. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today we will be doing a tutorial on smudging and blending in Procreate. What you're seeing right here are the golden circle stencils that are 3D printed and I'm just packing them to be delivered to some of my customers. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supported my channel during these tough times. So I thought I'd do a smudge tutorial to expand upon the original one. This was suggested by one of the comments in my channel and it's such a brilliant idea really because the original one only has one image for you guys to practice on so today I'm going to be doing three images. So without any further ado, let's start the tutorial. So the first thing you need to do is to head over to my website and you have to download three items. The first item would be the Smudge Project set of three which we are going to do today. And also you need to have the Smudge Brushes and also the Portrait Brush Pack. So if you already have downloaded them and installed them then you can skip these two. Once you have downloaded the items, make sure you install and export them to Procreate. If you do not know how, you can watch this video on how to do that. And remember to unzip, please. So now this file is the Smudge Projects file and I've opened it in Procreate. And this project, this is the first thing that you see, which are the instructions. So you can go ahead and delete these instructions and if you turn the check mark on it will turn on the groups which contain the images that you will be working on this tutorial so within the group there are two layers the smudge me layer and the image layer the smudge me layer is for your work and the image layer is for your reference now of course you need to tap on the smudge tool which is right next to the brush tool so once you tap on this smudge tool i'm doing it again and again so that you can see it um, you have to load the smudge brush pack right into it and then select flat brush smudge for this project it's also a good idea to duplicate the smudge me layer in case you mess things up so to do that just slide it right and then tap on duplicate now you can tap on the image layer and save it as a JPEG to do that tap share and hit JPEG and then just save image then you can load it side by side next to your Procreate as you smudge. Phew, that's a lot of tabs but right now we are ready to finally begin on our first image so if you look closely at the first image there is a note there so for this image we will be thinking of the direction and the brush size when it comes to blending the first rule is to mine the directions because if we just go crazy with our directions everything will just look messy like this but if we follow the directions of some of the movements, then everything would flow along nicely. But how do we decide what direction the blending should be? The direction of brush strokes are usually following along the direction of movements, like hair. Look how the direction of the brush strokes should be for the braided part of the hair. If it's the wrong direction, it would not look like braids at all. But for the face, it's best to follow along the movement of the muscles around the features of the face like the eyes, the nose and the lips. Using this principle alone, it is possible to create effects using the blending brush. For example, if I were to blend these areas in the direction as follows, then it will look like her face is in the midst of turning like wind swept hair when she just turned around to look at someone. The second rule that we want to talk about is the brush size that we use when we blend. So if the brush size is too big, then obviously all the details get lost. So we have to use a smaller brush size when it comes to smaller details, depending on the patch of color that we're trying to blend. To change the brush size, I'm just dragging this slider down and then the brush size will be smaller. I'm using the brush now to blend smaller areas in the portrait. So these are the two things that you need to remember when you are working on this portrait. So right now we are ready to start smudging this portrait. Ready, get set and go! So you see, before I start smudging, I like to hover my pen right on the iPad to check the brush size first and then I will adjust the brush size before I proceed. Make sure you are also smudging on the layer itself. So I'm doing the hair first and my left hand is constantly ready to slide the brush size slider to change the size of the brush as I'm working. 
For this portrait, we are currently using the flat brush smudge from the smudge brush pack. If you want your smudge to be a bit more grainy, you can change your brush to the charcoal blend brush. But otherwise, we are sticking with the flat brush smudge because this is a very painterly smudge brush that you can use for most paintings that you're going to be doing. For small areas and details, I like to use really really small size for my brush size so that I can get in and preserve the details of whatever tones and colours that are already there. Smudging only works when you're using a very very light pressure when you're pressing the pencil down as you smudge, you do not need to press hard, it's just a very very light gentle touch. Now if you look here and compare to the one in the image, you can see that mine is in the wrong direction. So here I'm fixing it by blending it in the correct direction. Blending and smudging in Procreate is so easy and I'm not even thinking right here while I'm doing it. And I'm sure this will be a very very quick and fast exercise for you as well. I only spent an hour each for each of the image that we are doing today so total of 3 hours, I'm sure you can do the same When you're blending the face, remember to follow the direction of how the muscles would go around each feature of the face. For the eyebrows, I like to blend from the skin towards the eyebrow so that I can add in more details later using the hairbrush. When you're blending the eyes, nose and lips, remember to use a small brush size so that you do not accidentally blend and smudge away all the important colour and the values. This is how it looks like after the smudging and blending, so right now we are going to go and load the portrait brush pack into our brush. We are going to pick the hair brush and touch up the hair a little bit. I've set my eyedropper tool to be my colour picker tool, so all I need to do is just tap on the eyedropper tool to pick a colour. To touch up the hair, all you have to do is just pick the colour of the highlight or the shadow colour nearby where you want to touch up and then start painting down the hairs. I use the same hairbrush for the eyebrows. Now I'm just using the sketch brush to add in the details such as the lashes and some highlights.
And if you have the glitter brush pad, you can use the soft brightening sparkles for the cheeks and some highlights. And now we finish the first portrait and let's get started with the next one, shall we? So let's turn off the layers for project 1 and turn on the layers for project 2. For this project, we are going to be focusing on groups of values. So if you see here in the original pictures, there are groups of dark and light tones and we can actually choose to group them as we like. So let's start to plan for that in another layer. I'm just defining some of the groups of the values that I want to retain. So some of the shadows, I want to group them together. And then where I leave no edges of green, I would want to soften the edges a little bit to blend them out. This way, even though we are painting the same picture, we will all have different results because we'll be grouping them differently according to our own interpretation of light and shadow. For the hair, I'm just going to split them into two groups of mid-tone and really really dark blacks so that I can really see the difference between the two groups. For the background, I'm going to be joining some of the shapes that are similar in lightness so that they are one shape when I blend them later on. For this part here, I want to blend both of them together so that there are no edges at all. Basically, it's a choice of design. Now I'm going to turn the opacity down so that I can begin smudging on the smudge me layer. This time as I smudge, I try to retain the hardness of the lines for all the green areas as much as possible and then I soften the ones that are not part of the group. I turned off the guide layer to check and see if I have hard edges for the rest of the green lines and it seems like this method is working. Once again, I'm retaining the hard edges of all the groups that I have defined the border and then for areas within the group, I am just blending over the entire thing just like what I'm doing right now. And each time, I would turn off the guide layer so that I can check and see the results of my smudging and I will adjust accordingly but I will always try to retain the hard edge of the borders that I've defined. And now I'm working on the background and retaining the groups that I've defined earlier. As usual, I'm using the same flat brush smudge to smudge the tones. Okay, now I'm going to do the skin tone um, using the groupings and I'm going to just put down some annotations to help you guys understand what I mean by the groupings that we'll be doing today. Hold you in the dark, make you forget about what's wrong. 
Remember to blend from the skin towards the eyebrows when you're smudging the eyebrows? So the next thing you need to do is to restate all the hard edges by painting over it and softening all the other edges again to touch up. Then you can use the hairbrush to do the eyebrows. Then you can use the sketch brush to do the lashes. Using the same brush, I'm going to lay down all the highlights. If you have the glitter brush pad, you can use some of the glitter brushes to put some effects onto this painting. The Reflective Highlights brush is a great brush to add texture to lips, just like this. The hair really pops when I add the highlights using the hairbrush. Using the flat brush smudge again, I can smudge the light streaks in towards the face so that it looks like the lights are having a lens flare towards the camera. You can also use the featured highlights freestyle brush to add more highlights to your painting. And with this, the painting for the second project is done and now we'll move on to the last and final painting of today's session. For the last blending tutorial, we are going to work on our hard and soft edges. So there are two types of edges which is the blended edges called soft edges and also hard edges which are very sharp edges that we can tell that there's like a line or a hard edge there. So for this exercise, I would like you to decide where you want your hardest edges to be and where you want your softest edges to be and then everything else will be in between. So for me, I'm going to decide that this eye is going to be my sharpest, sharpest and most hardest edges area. And I also want to draw attention to the lips and the hands in this area so these areas will also be kind of sharp. For my soft edges area, I want this entire area to be soft and really really painterly. I also want to decide that the smudging blending direction will be towards this direction so that I can draw some attention to the face. So using all the techniques that we have learned so far in the previous two projects, we can then um, execute a better painting this time time as I'm painting, I'm constantly thinking about the value groups and how I should group them and what are the edges, should it be soft or should it be hard. For these areas with the soft edges, I'm using a very very big brush to smudge the area so that it looks really really soft and faded out. For areas that I really want soft blends, I use the insane softy brush. This is my second softest brush in the smudge brush pack that you can use. Then I'm going to use the free hand selection tool and select just the lace of her clothing. Then we're going to use the Gaussian Blur filter on this selection to blur the lace of this fabric in order to make the edges softer. For the hands and the knuckles, if you know how to simplify and determine the right places to have hard and soft edges, you will end up with a hand that is um, very pleasing to look at. For this portrait, I'm constantly switching back and forth between the flat brush much and also the insane softy brush whenever I want hard or soft edges. Now I'm gonna add some effects for the bottom area by using the default Procreate brush. And I'm going to add an abstract paint brush stroke 
Feel free to experiment here and try new and creative ways of making your painting look more spontaneous. And here we are again, we can use the hairbrush to put in more details for the hair. And as usual, we'll be using the sketch brush to put in the details for the lashes and the highlights. When it comes to the left eye, I want the details to be really sharp and neat and clean so I'm cleaning up the edges for a bit. And lastly, I'm just changing the colour of the abstract stroke to teal because that's my favourite colour. Congratulations you guys, you have finished 3 smudge tutorials in Procreate, I'm so proud of you. Please tell me how did it go, did you have fun and how long you took to finish this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, bye!